Well, here's a question. Is Miami Beach too rowdy after 2 a.m.? City voters will decide this November as the city leaders try to move last call from 5 a.m. to 2 a.m. Major businesses in the booming economic area oppose the measure. NBC6 investigator Phil Prazen takes a look at the money behind both sides. Well, many cities have these battles between homeowner groups and business organizations, and this is the case here. Now, a few years ago, the businesses won, defeating a similar measure, but city leaders want to try again. The nightlife on South Beach generates millions of dollars and employs a few thousand people. That also has brought crime. That's the debate. Earlier this week, businesses and their employees organized a protest. We contribute hundreds of millions of dollars to the economy of Miami Beach. And we help keep our residents' property taxes down. The entity funding the campaign, wanting to keep last call at 5 a.m., is called Citizens for a Safe Miami Beach. They've raised $275,000, all from major businesses on South Beach, including Mango's Tropical Cafe and the owners of the Clevelander Hotel and Twist Nightclub. They also have support from the Miami Beach Chamber of Commerce, who paid for a study claiming 4,100 jobs and $227 million in sales are on the line. A spokesperson for the group tells me they're funding the campaign to keep economic activity going and keeping people employed. But if Citizens for a Safe Miami Beach wants to keep the hours as they are, Yes for a Safer Miami Beach wants to move last call to 2 a.m. The main supporters for that side, former Miami Beach Mayor Phil Levine, according to emails supporting the cause, and current Mayor Dan Gelber, who's also campaigning for re-election. There's no reason why our residents have to be held captive, essentially to a business model of a few Ocean Drive operators. Yes for a Safer Miami Beach has raised $25,000, donated by a state political committee, which had previously raised money from people like John Oringer and businesses like Clean Right Maintenance. Gelber's team and his allies on the city commission point to the cost of public safety, specifically this city analysis, stating the city loses $6.4 million a year on law enforcement in the area. A spokesman tells me they're actively raising money from community leaders, residents and businesses to turn the entertainment district into an art deco district. Well, right now, the campaign funded by the three businesses have around 10 times the amount of money in their account as the mayor's side, but that could change. Now, next week, both these sides have to file new campaign finance reports, and we will bring you an update then. Phil Prazen, NBC6 News.